So let's get started with three things you need to know about your hips. And I'll first just say uh, hips, as far as all the, the areas of the body where it's really important to have good mobility, good stability, good function, it's, it's probably the most important area of your body because it's really the central part of your body. So let's get started with what type of joint are the hips. So you can see here with this picture, it is a, it's a ball and socket, right? You've got this little socket, you've got a ball, and from there you get all kinds of range of motion, right? And what makes the, the hip special, just like the shoulder, is it has all kinds of range of motion, right? With the hip, you can flex the hip, you can extend the hip, you can internally rotate the hip, you can externally rotate the hip, you can adduct it where you bring it across your body, you can adduct it, abduct it where you take it away from your body. So there's a lot of range of motion, right? And that range of motion allows you to do things like walk and squat and lunge and bend and get up from the bed and do all those things. But when we don't have that range of motion, AKA mobility, it can leave us with a lot of, a lot of issues. And we don't just need mobility, we also need stability, right? All those things are really important to creating a good functional hip. So just a little anatomy here for you. You know, what you see here on the hip, you see an ilium, that's that big kind of pelvis, the, the thing that people can kind of hit on the side. And then you have the pubis, that's the lower rear part of the pelvis. You also have the, the ischium, that's one of the bones that, that helps form the hip that you see on the bottom there. But just notice really that ball and socket, right? And also, also think about when you walk or, or when you squat, the range of motion that your, your hip goes through, right? When you, when you walk, one foot goes forward, it flexes. And when you take that next step, that same leg now extends. When, you, when it goes forward again, it kind of externally rotates. When it comes behind you, it internally rotates. You need this mobility for function. So what problems can cause tight hips? And uh, there's really a number of issues, right, that can cause uh, tight hips or problems that tight hips can cause, right? So I, I talked earlier about mobility in the hip and how that's so important, right? You need that range of motion. But when you don't have that range of motion, when the hip's not moving enough, it causes things up and down the chain to move more than it's designed to, right? So for instance, if your hips don't move very well, something's going to compensate above and below the chain. For instance, if you, your back, your lumbar spine is going to move way more than it needs to if your hips don't move enough. Your knees are going to take on way more stress than they're designed for if your hips don't move enough, right? So that's why you can have a back problem or a knee problem, and you might be feeling pain there, but really the, the, the thing that's driving that is a lack of mobility in the hips, right? And that can also lead to sacroiliac issues um, because it's not moving, because it's stuck and it's changing the spine. It can mess up your entire posture, which of course then makes your shoulders painful or you have knots in your back or maybe some pain in your neck. So a lot of things, I want you to understand the body, the whole body is connected right? And the hips are very important for that. And at the very end here, I have lack of balance. So everyone knows anytime I'm talking about uh, physical capabilities, we always want to keep in mind balance and, and, and fall prevention, right? Poor hip function is one of the number one reasons why we start to lose balance. And we have falls and we have fractures. And that is a, that's, that's no man's land. That's what we don't want to have our fractures, right? So we really want to do what we can to improve hip balance. So why are your hips tight? Why are your hips tight, right? And in general, I, I will just say it's because of a sedentary lifestyle, right? And, and when I say sedentary lifestyle in large, it's because we sit a lot. And, and just like we're, we're living in a modern culture that has <laughs> radical amounts of sugar, radical amounts of processed and refined foods, fluorescent lights, like our ancestors did not live like that. They did not eat those type of foods. And those foods are leading to all kinds of degenerative diseases, modern diseases, right? Diseases of civilization. Very similar story with the body, right? Our ancestors moved a lot during the day. They were picking things up, carrying things, lunging, squatting, you know, sitting, <laughs> sitting in a loom, little womb squat all the time. And they were, they were using it, right? And if you don't use it, you lose it, right? Plain and simple. And we're spending most of our time in a very sedentary position with our hips flexed at 90 degrees, right? So when I say flexed at 90 degrees, I mean this right here right? We're in this position a whole lot right here. Just typing, eating, doing all those things. And the hips gets very tight. If you don't use it, you lose it. And that range of motion I was talking about earlier, hip extension, that goes away. 
internal rotation, external rotation, that goes away. Abduction, abduction, that goes away. When it goes away, hips don't move, all kinds of other problems. But just know the body will adapt to the stress, right? So just, just because the hip is like that now doesn't mean we can't change it. We just have to give it the right stress, the right load, right? Other reasons why the hips are tight, a weak core. You know, I mentioned this compensation thing that happens in the body. If the core is very unstable, the body will try to find stability somewhere else. So it'll make your hips tight, right? Think about that, right? So some of the things I'm gonna show you today are also helpful for improving the core. I mentioned poor posture, arthritis and bursitis. You know, a lot of these inflammatory issues that can happen around the, the hip and inflammatory conditions that make painful walking and, and carrying things. So that's another reason why. And then injury, labral tear. A labrum is kind of a suction that keeps that ball and socket intact. Sometimes because of lack of mobility, because of lack of stability, there can be an injury there. And when there's an injury there and we don't move it, we get it restoring that range of motion, everything in there can tighten up in order to create stability. So it's important to know why our hips might be tight. So ready for the good stuff? And everyone on Facebook can't hear me, but everyone here hopefully can. So Rachel and I are going to walk you through some simple routines to improve your, your hips, get mobility back in there, really restore function, and in doing so, also reduce pain and your risk of injury. And the way I'm going to do this is, is I'm, going to, I'm going to explain two exercises for each routine, right? One thing is going to be uh, for mobility, right, in order to improve range of motion. And the next thing is going to be for stability, to strengthen the muscles around there. And these couplets... I suggest you do two to three sets of each couplet that I show you and maybe 10 to 15 reps. We're going to walk you through this, but there's going to be five different couplets that we're going to show you. And at the end, I'm going to explain more, but ideally with your own routine, what you want to do is do two to three different couplets a day, two to three sets, 10 to 15 reps. And I'm going to start from number one, which is really the easier stuff that maybe some of the people that are in, in a radical amount of pain can do. And then we're going to work our way up to more challenging couplets that if you're feeling good or eventually you want to get there, you can do those couplets. So you don't necessarily have to have equipment, but I'm going to show you some things that you can do with a resistance band, which is really helpful for creating stability in the hips and also a belt would be really helpful for you to have around. But again, if you, if you can't do them with us today, just watching and following along will also be helpful. And I'm gonna show you one stretch um, that you can do in kneeling and another on the edge of the bed. So lots of good things that we're gonna show you. So first one, we're gonna go over a belt stretch and some bridges. Then we're gonna talk about a hip flexor stretch and clamshells, which is a great way to improve the external rotators of the hip. Then we're gonna get into a repeated hip extension stretch. I've mentioned extension, how it's so important matched with a quadruped hip extension stretch. And then we're gonna do a 90-90. And my, one of my personal favorites is a Jane Fonda. Rachel knows about this. We've done a Jane Fonda exercise in the, in the all team. And at the end, we're gonna show you an internal rotation stretch, extremely important, paired with some monster walks, okay? Sound good? Sound good to you, Rachel? I'm ready, looking forward to it. Okay, all right. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen here and we're gonna come back so you can see me, everybody's good. Okay. So let's get started with a belt stretch and we're gonna pair that with bridges, okay? So right here with this belt, what you're gonna do is take your belt and loop it right here, okay? And you're gonna loop it around your leg, around your foot really, right here. Okay, so I've, I've got this on my right leg. And what I'm gonna do is take it up and hold for about three to five seconds. You're gonna feel a stretch in the back of your hamstring. You just really breathe easy, relax your face. And then we're gonna take it over. You're gonna feel that big on your IT band. Ooh. We're going into adduction and then back up and then down, okay? And here we're doing about maybe five to 10 of these, just nice and easy with three to five second holds each time. And again, what we're doing here is stretching the hamstrings and stretching our, our hip and adduction, getting the IT band stretched out working the outside here. A lot of women especially have pain on that outside right there because of the increased uh, width of the pelvis. We call that a Q angle. So a lot of stress can be taken on around the acetabulum. So just really easy meter up for five seconds, over for five seconds. And you'll feel a big stretch there. And ideally you wanna kind of keep a straight leg. So you feel that stretch in there, Rachel? 
I do. Do you want to keep your foot flat or do you want to put your toes down towards you when it's up? Uh, don't point your toes. Bring your, bring your foot back. Yep. Okay. Oh, yeah. I feel in the back of my leg. That feels incredible. Right. Right. So you'll do about uh, five of those. Okay. And we're going to pair that with a bridge. Okay. Now, a bridge is incredibly important for strengthening your glutes. I like to say we, we have a lot of uh, gluteal amnesia. People are, are not using their glutes, so we're going to wake it up. It's a very important part of creating stability around the hips, okay? So laying like this, knees bent, feet flat, what I want you to do is imagine a bowl of soup right here under your belly button, okay? What you're first going to do is tilt that bowl of soup towards you with your pelvis and go up segment by segment by segment by segment all the way up, 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 squeeze the glutes and then roll back down in the opposite fashion, going from the top to the bottom, and then roll back and tilt the soup the other way. So tilt the soup towards you, roll up, 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 hold, 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 roll down, 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 tilt the soup the other way. So a couple more here, roll it towards you, up, 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 segment by segment, squeeze, 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 a good two to three second hold, and then roll back down. And let's do one more. Again, this can be done on, ideally on the floor or on a yoga mat where you can get some good grip with your feet on a flat floor. You can do it on your bed, but it's not as ideal. Okay, so feel that there, Rachel? I do, good. I love, ridges are one of my favorites because not only are they good for your hamstrings, but for your glutes, so I love it. Wakes them all up. Yeah, super great. And I'm going to show everybody just one little way they can progress that with, uh, with a band, right? So you can put that around your knees, okay? And we do the bridge where we roll up, and you go to the top, and then you go out, and you go in, and then down, okay? So you tilt the bowl through towards you, up, 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 out, in, down. You're going to feel a whole lot more happening right there. See Rachel do it, up, 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 go out. And Rachel, you want to spread the knees apart at the top. Okay. Mm -hmm. And out, out, out. Yep, oh, yeah, there you go. You feel that? <laughs> oh, I <All> feel right. <laughs> So it's, it's a whole different game changer. And, and, I, and I would say put the belt a little bit below your knee, actually. So it won't, won't slide back. Right no, the other, the other side of the knee, other side. Like here? There you go. There you go. Yep. Oh, yeah. Okay, perfect. So that's a way to progress the bridge, right? So we just showed you one couplet, the belt stretch and the bridge. And the way you would do that is about, a, about five to 10 reps of the belt stretch on each side, then about 10 to 15 bridges with or without the brand, the band. And then you would do two to three sets, right? Real simple. Okay. Let's move on to the the second one, this is level two, our second couplet. So we're gonna do a kneeling hip flexor stretch paired with clam shells. So at the beginning, we mentioned one of the issues with hip mobility is tight hip flexors from sitting all the time, right? The function of the hip flexor is of course to flex the hip. It's like a little rope that comes from your spine down to your, your, your thigh right here, your femur. But for most of us, it's tight and it prevents us from extending, right? So a hip flexor stretch, you fix this a little bit here so everybody can see me okay. You're gonna get in this kneeling position, okay? Tall kneeling position. What you're gonna do first, squeeze your butt, right? You wanna lock this back leg, lock this glute right here. Take your hands, put them right under you like this here. And then what you're gonna do with the locked glute is, is roll forward and hold that, right? But don't lean forward like this stay upright. You're going to feel a big stretch right in here as you keep that glute locked. Keeping that glute locked is what prevents the pelvis from rotating. You want to keep that pelvis neutral as you rotate forward, tall spine, looking forward and breathing, feeling that stretch, holding for about 30 seconds. You could do a minute, you could do two minutes if you wanted to, but to get started, just do 30 seconds and feel that stretch. That's a true hip flexor stretch as opposed to an extension stretch, which we'll discuss later. True hip flexion. Feel that, Rachel? I do. 
my stabilizing leg is shaking a little bit, so I can definitely tell I need it. Good, good. So you would do both sides for 30 seconds, and we're going to pair that with a clamshell. This is to help strengthen the external rotators of the hip. So a clamshell, what you're going to do, just go right here. Okay, you want your knees bent, your chest forward right here. Knees in front of you, keep the feet together. Go up and down slow. Go up and down slow. What you wanna to wanna to avoid is this leaning back, right? Don't do this. Keep everything forward. It's all in the hip, down slow. Up, down slow. Up, down slow. This is another one we wanna do 10 to 15 repetitions. The key is down slow. And keep going, Rachel. I'm gonna show a way to progress this with the band. Okay. So same thing here with the band. You can make it harder like this, right here, down slow. This is the way to add a little bit of resistance. All right, so remember, we also wanna do both legs. We, don't, we won't do that right now for time purposes. But when you do both legs, I want you to pay attention to how many reps you can do on your legs, right? What most people will, will see is that one leg is weaker than the other, right? So one leg, you may only be able to do 12 reps, but another one you could do 15 reps. When you're doing these exercises to correct imbalances, always work the weak leg first and then match the reps on the other side. Match the reps and the load, in this case, either no band or a band on the other side. And over time, you'll create more balance, okay? So that's level two, okay? Again, on that, two to three sets of a 30 second to one minute half kneeling stretch, the hip flexor stretch, paired with 10 to 15 clamshells on each leg, two to three sets, okay? And you, you'll feel it after that. It's a good little workout. All right, Rachel, ready for number three? Let's do it. I'll put number three. Okay, so we're gonna do a repeated hip extension stretch paired with a quadruped hip extension movement. Okay, so for this right here, I mentioned how the hip joint is always flexed. Here, we're gonna use repeated movements to open up and really mobilize that hip joint in extension. So again, in a half kneeling position, before we just went, squeeze our glutes into the sustained stretch. Here, we're actually gonna be relaxing and then moving forward, pressure on, pressure off, pressure on, pressure off. Try to make sure the torso stays perpendicular to the ground. You're not leaning forward in any way with your torso, everything's staying upright, and you're getting as much hip extension as you can right here. Also, when you're doing this, breathe with the movement. As you move in, exhale, come back. Exhale on the way in, inhale on the way back. Be really gentle and work in a comfortable range of motion. But this hip extension, incredibly important for you and your gait pattern and to compensate sitting so much where your hips in a flex position. This right here alone can get rid of a whole lot of hip issues, okay? So 10 to 15 on each side. So we mobilize in hip extension. And Rachel, let's get your, your spine up a little more upright. Okay. Yep, there you go. No. No. You got tight. You got tight hips, girl. <laughs> yeah, I have very tight yeah. hips, which is why I need yeah. it. Yeah, exactly. So y'all can see that, right? Where we don't want to do this right here. All right, that's what we don't want to do. We want all the motion in the hip. In extra. There you go. That's better, Rachel. That's better. So it, it helps. For, it helps for anyone that's like me that has tight hips to kind of keep your hands on your hips and open up your your chest so you're not allowing your chest to collapse down. That helped me to stay up in Good. this position. Yeah, you'll feel it. You'll feel it for sure. Oh, all yeah. right. Okay, so we're gonna pair that with a quadruped. That means on all fours, on knees and hands, extension right here, okay? So you're gonna keep a 90 degree angle in your knee and go up and down, up and down, up and down. When you're doing this, make sure your belly button stays facing towards the ground. Make sure that your knee stays at a 90 degree angle. 
That helps you get the most resistance and really work those glutes. Okay. And also notice here, we're doing one side at a time. So your weaker side, do that first. And you could do anywhere from 10 to 15. You could even do more reps on this, but go into a, a rep range that where you, you really start to feel like, you're like, oh, this is kind of burning pretty good. Okay. So we would do both sides, right? You would do both sides of um, the repeated extension stretch and the quadruped activation, what we're doing right here, two to three sets, okay? About 10 times on the repeated hip extension, about 10 to 15 reps with that repeated uh, hip extension and quadruped, all right? Sound good, Rachel? Fantastic. Okay, so now, now we're gonna move on to level four. Ready for level four? We're gonna good. do a 90, 90 stretch, a 90, 90 stretch and a Jane Fonda strengthening stretch. That is, we're, we're, it's about to get real. I told you a level four is coming, <laughs> all right? So, 90 90 what we're going to do here is make a 90 degree angle with your front leg and a 90 degree angle with your back leg so you see here 90 degrees and 90 degrees all right so from here we're keeping a straight torso but flexing at the hip and coming forward not slouching like that right flexing and going right over that knee and holding and breathing nice and easy you're going to feel that way back in your hip you might feel it on the side of your leg. And after a while, explore different areas. So you can move over to the right a little bit and go down. You can move over to the left a little bit. You can do easy little bounces, very gentle bounces, exhaling as you do it. You just feel that stretch, right? It's really helpful for opening up the IT band, outside part of the hip, very effective. All right, get on these stretches, hold for about a minute, 30 seconds to a minute and breathe. Really important to breathe and really relax your face. If your face is clenched up, it's gonna hurt. It's, it's not gonna be able to stretch as much. And just while we're here, just go ahead and get the other side to feel if you notice any, if you notice any imbalances, right? You'll notice one side maybe way more tight than the other, right? And just know that that imbalance, it happens because of habits, the, that the habitual way we walk, the habitual way we sit, and but it impacts our walking, right? It's no different than if, if, if one of your tires on your car was a little out of alignment, that tire would likely wear down a little quicker, right? We wanna identify these imbalances and try to do what we can to make them more balanced. Never gonna be perfect, but that's not about being perfect, it's about the progress, right? Progress. Okay, so again, about 30 seconds to a minute on each side of that. And then what we're gonna do is move to one of our American icons, Jane Fonda, all right? So this is, <laughs> this is a way to really get the hip muscles working, okay? It's gonna, we're gonna, I'm talking fire. <laughs> That's what we're gonna experience. All right, so laying on your side here, what you're gonna do, have your bottom leg bent, okay? Top leg is straight, same thing. Keep that belly button pointed forward, okay? The, the toe should be pointing forward towards the computer screen or your, or your iPhone. What we're gonna do first is abduction. Go up 10 times, one, two. Try to keep your leg straight or even a little bit behind your body, but don't let the leg go in front of your body. Keep that toe pointed forward. Call it six, seven, eight, nine, 10, hold it up. Small circles, one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Go the opposite direction of what you just did ten times. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Up and down ten more times, Rachel. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Woo! Oh my God! Yeah. It helps. It helps to smile through that one because you are feeling that burn. I told you it's fire. <laughs> it's fire, right? So that 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 it doesn't look hard, but it is. It, it starts to get to going, and and we're move, again we're moving stability right there. This ball and socket, so much is happening in there. Pat, you got tired just watching that. <laughs> 
so love it. Again, that, that's level four. And if it's too hard, you know, you can on level four, just do less reps, just do five of those. That would be good too. Or even just get started with up and down, but you can feel all the muscles work in there. Okay. So that's level four, everybody. So we did a 90, 90 stretch where you could do 30 seconds to a minute. And then we did the Jane Fonda up 10 times, do it around 10 times, go to the other side, 10 times up, down 10 times, two to three sets. You will feel it like crazy. Okay. So now we're going to do uh, an internal rotation stretch. We haven't done that yet paired with a monster walk. And this is where what I'm going to show you, you'll, you'll want a band. And if you don't have one, I'm gonna, again, I'm going to show you where to get a band. These are great. So internal rotation, very important for when you're walking. And we very rarely express internal rotation in the hip. This can get rid of a lot of pain right here. So we're going to be in this position here. Okay. So you can see me from the side here like this, kind of leaning back. All right. See Rachel, yeah. And what we're gonna do is just take our knees, roll them over to one side and roll them over to the other side. I wanna try to keep a 90 degree angle in the knees. Remember to use your breath and exhale as you go. And as best you can, keep your belly button pointed forward. You're gonna feel the internal rotation stretch from this, uh, this outside leg that's going in, right? Nice and easy. And you'll know when you feel it. Just go right after that stretch. Again, notice the imbalance. Notice if you have one hip that has a whole lot more internal rotation than the other. Breathe with it, nice and easy. Okay. Nice and easy. And this one again, about 10 to 15 on each side. Try to see if you can go a little further each time. You feeling that, Rachel? I am. And as you go, you'll realize you warm up. And I was going to say, never force it. I know some people want to force it. But like you said, as you warm up, as you keep going, you, you start being looser and you can start getting more mobility work as you go. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. So we're going to pair that. That's, hip, that's the hip internal rotation stretch. We're going to pair that with a monster walk. And what I've done is I've taken a, a simple TheraBand and I tied it into a knot. I'm going to put it around. My ankle's right here to give me some stability. And with a monster walk, you can see my legs here. I'm in this position, right? I'm just doing a little walk. Step, 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 step. I'm going forward right now. Maybe do about 10 steps forward and then go backwards. Step, 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 step. I'm keeping the resistance on the band. So I'm keeping my legs just far enough apart to where I feel that resistance, okay? We just went forward and back. You can also go like sideways. Step, 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 step. Real easy. About 10 one way. Okay. 10 the other. And right now is when it really, really, <laughs> really starts to burn, right? Especially so the Jane Fonda move. <laughs> it's like the Jane Fonda move uh, with, with resistance even more, right? So the, that, the, the resistance bands are great too, because right, you can put them in your pocket and you can, do, you can go anywhere. We just showed you some things you can do with the hip, but <clears throat> really great, really great. So, okay, how you feeling, Rachel? Are you a little out of breath? I'm a little out of breath. I'm wondering if everybody else is <laughs> a little out of breath from doing that. I am okay. definitely got a little, got my heart pumping, that's for sure, but it feels good. My hips feel good, my body feels good, but at the same time, I got my heart going. So I'm liking it, trying to get my breath back. Awesome. You know what we'll do here is uh, I think I can I can relaunch the poll, and uh, maybe we can try doing that again. Yeah, I just showed everybody the results of the poll. Let's do a relaunch of the poll. So, where are you now? How do your hips feel now on a scale of one to ten? With one being super painful, you know, ten being they're they're feeling wonderful. For anybody who who participated, we'd love to know where we're at now. So it looks like we got. Oh, we got some wonderfuls. That's great. We're moving up a little bit. Okay. All right. I think in general, in general, we got some improvements. Wonderful. So hopefully, looks like we still have some super painful. I would say hang, hang in there. And Evelyn had a good question. She said, uh, a printout would help. So I mentioned the email that we sent you, right? We're going to send you an email after this. It's, it's going to have the recording to, to the video you have here, but it's also going to have a printout 
and a writing of all those exercises that we just went over, separated into level one to four out of five, and with the instructions to do two to three levels per day, two to three sets per level, 10 to 15 reps, okay? Awesome, so very good stuff. We got lots of them, so let me share this poll too. Everybody can see. Really great. I love it when people, they get better very, fairly quickly, <laughs> you know, because a lot of times we go, we go to our, sometimes we go to the docs and they just give us a pain pill and not, never really address any of this stuff. And it's so important that we get to the root issues. So awesome. Thank you, Nancy. I hope you all enjoyed that. So let's, let's continue on with some of the, some of the other aspects we want to help you with here today. And we just discussed these, um, these exercises that you can do, but there's also three essential nutrients that can help you reduce inflammation and protect your joints. So I mentioned it's not just about range of motion and strengthening those muscles. There's other things at play, right? The inflammation that can be just chronic around your hips that prevent the tissue from healing. We want to address that because it's a big part of that functionality and keeping the whole complex system of the hip really healthy. So we're going to do a special today and talk about three different native path products that we have here that can help you, right? And we showed you that easy routine that you can do with your hips with exercises. Here's an easy supplement routine that you can help with your hips and really keep everything uh, strong around there. So collagen, hopefully everyone knows this by now. It is foundational. It is the most abundant protein in the body. Most of us are extremely deficient in it, but this is gonna be extremely important for your joint health. We're also gonna talk about Collagen Care Plus. That's something I don't think a lot of people know about, but what that does, it provides all the raw materials, the vitamins and the minerals, so your body can start producing more collagen endogenously on its own. And I mentioned inflammation, how that's such a big part of what keeps us in pain. And krill oil is one of the best things that we can take to reduce that inflammation with the really healthy essential omega-3 fatty acids. All right, so let's get started here and talk about a little bit more about collagen, right? So simply put two scoops of native path collagen peptides into your morning coffee. One of the easiest things that you can do, you can put it in your tea, you can put it in your, in your smoothies, um, but it leads to significant improvements in joint stiffness and overall osteoarthritic symptoms. It lowers inflammation and it gives your joints additional support, right? That labrum that I was talking about, the tendons that attach from the muscles to the attachments around that acetabulum, um, so important for creating more stability and structure around, around the joint. Also helps with the cartilage, uh, which is really that rubber-like tissue that kind of provides that padding in your hip joint. So really important there. And step two is the Collagen Care Plus. I, mean, I remember I mentioned this is the thing that most people don't know about that probably everyone who is taking collagen should know about. Um, but again, it provides the raw materials, the essential vitamins and minerals that you take. So your body starts producing more collagen on its own. And what I suggest is taking two native path collagen care plus capsules with a glass of water first thing every morning. And there are multiple nutrients in each capsule of collagen care plus that will help you uh, keep your joints, uh, the inflammation down, help you move smoothly and less pain. So vitamin A, vitamin C, B7, magnesium, hyaluronic acid, and zinc. So vitamin A, one of the most powerful antioxidants out there, right? And it's known to have an anti-inflammatory properties. It's important for maintaining the health of the skin, which can protect the joints from mechanical damage. It also has an important role in regulating cell growth and development. Vitamin C, which most people are familiar with with the immune system, but it does lots of other things, right? So studies show that vitamin C has been found to stimulate the production of collagen and uh, it's also key in preventing inflammatory arthritis, maintaining healthy joints with osteoarthritis, and it's an important antioxidant which fights the molecules that trigger inflammation. And B7 is one of the components necessary for rebuilding muscle strength and helping tissues grow. And this vitamin is also key in alleviating muscle and joint inflammation, aches and pains. And then we put magnesium in here. I'm a big fan of magnesium. So many people are deficient in it. It's really the primer that allows you to absorb all your vitamins and minerals. It's great for reducing stress as well. But your body's ability to absorb calcium into the bones is affected by magnesium deficiency. I've talked about this a lot. I'm not really a big fan of calcium supplementation. It's better to just eat those foods from things like uh, salmon and nuts and leafy greens. Magnesium is what's needed to get your body to absorb the calcium. So super important there. Hyaluronic acid is a natural substance found in your body's joints and it acts as a lubricant and protective cushion. So your body 
has its own sort of oil, right? You remember like the Wizard of Oz and you got the Tin Man and like, just give me some oil so I can move around a little better. You have that. It's called synovial fluid, right? But most, most of us are very deficient in it because we're really low in hyaluronic acid. And then we have zinc, another great one for the immune system, but also for the joints. So there was an observational study which indicated that postmenopausal women consuming higher levels of zinc are usually at a lower risk of arthritis. So those, those supplements right there, all those minerals in Collagen Care Plus, what they do, there's no collagen in there, but what they do is get your body to start producing all the raw materials it needs for a healthier joint, the synovial fluid, um, everything around the structure of those tendons, really, really important, and it'll help you get even better results. And then we have number three, I mentioned inflammation. Uh, this was always something that was addressed when I was in, working in the clinic with people in pain. Many of us are chronically inflamed um, to the point where it's preventing us from healing and, and getting stronger and improving range of motion. So if the inflammation is always there, if there's a con chemical component to it, we're going to have a hard time um, fixing that. So easy way to do that is to upgrade your, the quality of your fats. We want to get rid of all the toxic fats, the seed oils, you know, the industrial stuff that's not good for our hearts, not good for our bodies, very inflammatory. Replace them with the good fats like coconut oil, avocado oil, olive oil, butter, things, you know, the good native fats we talk about. And then supplement with krill oil to really reduce the inflammation, right? So krill oil is fantastic for that. I suggest taking one to two a day. If you're someone who's having high amounts of pain, you know, it's really been, it's, it's almost unbearable. You're, you're someone who needs to be taking two a day. If you're someone who the pain level's not that high, you're generally good. You're looking for, uh, for maintenance purposes. Just one a day will be good. So there's a lot of studies on krill. Recent studies of a, boosting your omega-3 levels have been shown to reduce inflammation, reduce joint pain, significantly reduce nerve pain, which is another thing that a lot of people deal with that you know, conventional science doesn't really have many answers for, and increasing your grip strength. Krill oil is absolutely fantastic. I highly suggest taking everybody should take that considered a foundational thing but do it in conjunction with getting rid of all those really bad uh, toxic fats that aren't good for you and then number four i mentioned the, the bands right these bands are super helpful to have around just to give yourself some resistance we showed you a way to use the bands with bridges we showed you a way to use them with clamshells and the, the monster walks if nothing else the, the monster walks uh, you can go a long way and no matter what you're doing, like I would suggest doing them before you go for an evening or, or morning walk, just to wake up those hips and get it more stable. Doing it every day make you feel a whole lot better. So why choose native path supplements? And everyone here, I hopefully hopefully knows by now, we, we are all about the purity of our products. No fillers, no crazy sugars or anything like that. And our formula contains, our this is our collagen, contains only one ingredient, right? It's hydrolyzed collagen peptides from grass-fed bovine. It's type one and type three. We choose that because it's the most digestible, absorbable, potent form of collagen you can take as opposed to like, you know, type two or type five or multi-collagens. That's very watered down collagen, right? And our, our cows, the place where we get our collagen, they're never given any hormones, never get any antibiotics. They're always only eating grass. They're never fed grains. They're getting sunshine. All of that highly impacts the quality of the collagen that you consume. It makes it more, more digestible for you. And I always say, you're not just what you eat, you are what you eat eats. It's where the source of it comes from. And that's what we really pride ourselves on with all of our Native Path products. And why choose Native Path supplements for like, for instance, our Collagen Care Plus? It's the first of its kind, like to, to, really, to really identify all the key vitamins and minerals that are gonna help your body produce the, the collagen that you need on your own, it's, a, it's really unique and it's very powerful. So again, three support vitamins in there, most raw, potent form, vital trace minerals to keep you looking, feeling, and functioning at your all-time best at any age. And again, no added junk, no GMO, it's gluten-free. You'll never hear me any, say anything <laughs> about gluten that I like. No soy, no preservatives of any kind, the highest quality product. And why choose Native Path Supplements? Third part, krill oil, 500 milligrams of krill oil contaminant free, no fishy aftertaste. It comes from the pristine waters of the Antarctic Ocean. So unlike fish oil, you know, mercury is something we're concerned about. You don't get that with this krill oil. Also has astaxanthin, powerful, powerful antioxidant to really keep those inflammation levels as low as possible. And today we are going to do a 50% off order when you order today on those three things. It's our way of 
just saying thank you to everybody who participates in these webinars and, and all your questions and all your feedback is so valuable. So we really don't want to make this fun for you. And we're also going to include these free bands. These are actually branded Native Path, right? So uh, they're bands that we picked out, love the resistance level. There's a yellow and there's a red, which is which is a stronger resistance. But the, the yellow is, is, is the light resistance that we use today. And we're going to include free shipping. So like an awesome deal. I always want to make sure like we have the best deals on these webinars uh, just to make it worth everybody's time. And then if you click on a link, uh, Krista or Rachel are going to put a link in the chat here. We're going to also email this to you. When you click on that link, you can see there's three options that you can get. So the most popular and the one I suggest is, is the three bundle option. That's where you save the most and allows you to really stay on the path and and have all you need for the next few months. So there's collagen, three bags of, of, of the collagen, uh, 56 serving bags, three bottles of Collagen Care Plus, and three bottles of the Crow, and it'll get you set up. And that allows you to get only pay $67 for each bundle and a total of $278.94 in total savings. So really great uh, opportunity to save some money there and take advantage. And then we wanna talk about our Feel the Difference guarantee. So at Native Path, like, I mentioned the purity, but we feel very confident in our products. We're consistently seeing testimonials come in of people who are trying, trying our products and really noticing the difference. So we believe in the quality of our products, which is why we offer a risk-free 60-day feel the difference return policy. And what that means is, is you have 60 days to try out our products. And if for any reason, like you're not thrilled with your results, you know, your, your hips aren't better, even your shoulders, your nothing is relieved, like your whole body is not more comfortable, um, then, then for any reason you're not completely satisfied, simply call our customer care center and we'll give you a refund, right? And, and give, give you uh, assistance in that. So rest assured you can order with confidence and knowing that your purchase is backed by our ironclad 60 day feel the difference guarantee. That way you can move forward with confidence. And I think with that, I just want to say thank you and, and congratulations for, for making it through the hip routine today. So now we have some time for some Q&A and uh, let's see what we got here. I'm going to stop sharing my screen and let's break out and see what we got. So why don't we start with Candy? So Candy says, are these exercises okay uh, for someone with osteoporosis in the hip? And Candy, the answer is yes. Um, every, every exercise I showed you today is completely appropriate. I would just say, make sure that you're doing them with good form and really listen to your body. If something is more and more painful, the more you do it, then it's a no, right? It's okay to have a little discomfort uh, while you're doing the exercises, but really the exercises that are right for you are going to be dictated by what you're feeling as you do that. So if you get like pain, you know, like, like, like in your joints that get worse and worse and worse as you do it, that means the exercise is probably not good for you. But if you're just having like muscle kind of getting fatigued, kind of burning sensation, that's really good. That's what we want. The only exercise I showed today, which isn't appropriate for a certain population, is the hip abduction stretch where we went over the body. When you cross the leg over the body, that would not be appropriate for someone who is within two months of a, of a hip surgery. So if you're someone who had hip surgery within the past two months, going across your body, doing that abduction motion is not something we want to do. You'll be able to restore that later on. Um, but give yourself at least two months. So Patricia said, are you pressing the spine in the roll? Uh, so I'm assuming you're talking about the bridge. I'm not really pressing the spine. I'm just really thinking about a bowl of soup that's kind of rotating that pelvis towards me and going up and up and up and up, but not really pressing the spine in a roll in any way, okay? And Crystal asked, can the hip extensions be modified for people with bad knees? Yes, so Crystal, for the hip extensions, what you could do is just lean up against something right here, okay? And same thing, go up like this. Takes a little more balance, but instead of being in all fours and putting pressure on your knees, you just lean right here and go up, okay? And if that doesn't work for you, just stick with that bridge and that'll get you some good results. Anonymous says, how does your MCT oil affect your cholesterol levels? I would say not in a negative way. If anything, it's gonna improve your cholesterol profile. Uh, so it may make your total cholesterol go up, but as far as your cholesterol profile, you'll, you'll see improvements in that. Uh, Sherry said, I've been taking the krill oil for a couple months, still have swelling in my feet. Any suggestions? So Sherry, what also may help you is some exercises for the swollen feet. So if you go to Native Path, just go, just go to YouTube 
and then put in native path swollen feet on your on your youtube search you'll see a video where i show i think like seven different exercises that you can use for swollen feet it's also on nativepath.com you can just do a search for swollen feet i would suggest that and i would also make sure that you removed all those toxic fats right the uh, uh vegetable oil safflower oil all the seed oil that's removed the sugar drink lots of water that should help you in a major way try that for another couple of months doing those exercises every day and please keep us updated. All right, let's see. Uh, Teresa says, I daily, I, I think I, I daily use advanced amino powder and Longevity Osteo FX and Longevity Tangy Tangerine multivitamin. So these three items are used daily. Would I get too much mineral, et cetera, with your products you're recommending or I only need your products? Is it important not to over? Yeah, so that's a good thing. I, you know, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what's all in the longevity, tangy, tangerine, or the multivitamin mineral complex. Um, and so I can't speak for those products. You know, um, what I can speak for is the quality of our products and the effectiveness of our products. And there's a lot of other stuff out there that, you know, we there's a lot of fillers. There's a lot of things you don't need. So yeah, I am confident in our products that just take our products. I, I would really just give ours a shot and see what, what kind of results you get and do it for three months and see. Um, so that's my take on that, but good question. And Evelyn said, should I wait to take five weeks after knee replacement? No. So if you're, if you're wanting to really improve, whether you're going into a, a knee replacement, whether you just got out of a knee replacement or you're two months post-op, I would highly suggest taking all of these things in conjunction with that. So I would always have my patients start taking collagen before the knee surgery so they would heal and go into that faster. The healing is very important. Um, so giving your body the raw materials as you're going through that healing process, the sooner you can do that, the better. So really good question, Evelyn. And uh, you said you're recovering from knee replacements. Can I begin exercises now? Yes, absolutely. Um, and for the knee, Evelyn, what you may also want to check out is just go to nativepath.com, go to search at the top and then put in knee, and you'll see a whole bunch of other exercises that are great for your knee as well that I think you can, you can benefit from. Jane says, I had complete hip replacement in September. Even though I had a PT for six weeks, it's difficult to get my sock on the foot. I cannot get my foot flat, my foot to my knee yet. My foot to my knee. So I'm thinking you're talking about right here, right? So what we're lacking there is, uh, is hip flexion. Um, and so Jane, what you may want to do, you said your, your knee stays up in the air and won't lie flat. I'm trying to think what's going on with you there. Especially cannot lean forward and put on the sock, especially when my foot is up close to my knee. So it sounds to me like you're lacking hip flexion, right? That's the main thing. Um, so I would, I would unload it a little bit and work on, this right here, where you're pulling in. Okay, nice and easy. And just laying one, one leg off the side of the bed, the other one you're pulling in, okay, right here. The other thing that may help you is sitting on a chair and just work on widening your legs a little bit and going forward right here. Just nice and easy as you work on this. If, if you can even hold on to a chair in front of you and just work on that hip flexion, you want to avoid rounding like this and really flex right there. I think uh, give it some time and do it for two to four minutes every day. That's a good question. And please keep us updated. So any modifications needed with sciatica pain? I don't think you'll have too many issues with sciatica pain with any of these things. If you do, Tina, just go ahead and email our customer experience team and uh, let me know. But Main thing is listen to that sciatica pain. If you're doing a movement and you have more sciatica pain, in other words, it gets more intense or it moves further down your leg, we wanna stop doing that exercise. But every, everything that you have the same amount of pain or it decreases intensity, it's gonna be okay for you. Rosa says, I had a bone density test last year and it was found that I have a mild case of osteopenia in the hip femur. Will collagen help this? I'm taking your collagen and bone health collagen right now. I see my rheumatologist at the end of the month. Yeah, everything, everything that I showed you here today is going to help for sure. Um, you know, you're doing the right things by taking collagen. You're doing definitely doing the right things by taking bone health collagen. 
the magnesium and collagen care plus is going to be very helpful for you. Um, as is those calcium rich foods like almonds, uh, salmon, leafy greens and vitamin D Rosa. That's the other thing I would add is vitamin D3. We have a really great vitamin D3 uh, product with MCT oil. I would suggest taking at least 2000 uh, I use every day. That's two full droppers, but that should help you in a major way. And the resistance exercises that I showed you today will actually make the bone stronger too. So those are good ways to tackle it. Avoid the milk, avoid the calcium supplements. Hopefully we're not taking any uh, medications, but if you can get off those, that's, that's great too, but work with your doc on that. So Kathy says, will this help with arthritis? Yes, Kathy, absolutely. You know, a lot of the arthritis happens from um, the sedentary lifestyle, poor mobility, and dietary issues. So everything I discussed here today, um, especially the krill oil and the exercises are really going to help you with that. So hopefully that helps. And we've got a lot of other questions in the chat here. Rachel, also, how are you doing? What yeah, we got? Also, uh, Krista announced when we had that question about the foot swelling is we'll be covering how to improve circulation and release swelling at our next webinar on February 1st. So we have more information to come. So if anyone's looking for additional information on that, we will have that in our next webinar. So definitely join us on our next one. Yes, yeah. The, the, we're trying. What we're trying to do is is really give you all the topics that you that you most need. You know, we we're doing a hip webinar because you all said you really needed it. Um, so we we've gotten a lot of feedback that swollen ankles are a big deal too. So we're we're putting out as much information as we can about that. So Lee, um, did I say that we should not take calcium with D three? In general, and this is for everybody, I'm just in general not a fan of calcium supplementation. You know, in terms of taking making the bones stronger, it's not very effective. There's a lot of negative impacts on calcium in terms of what it can do to, to your body. So what you what you want is strong bones. And what's going to help that is really helping you absorb more calcium, calcium from the food that you eat. So I suggest stopping calcium supplements, stopping milk, but taking bone health collagen, taking regular collagen, taking magnesium, taking vitamin D. Uh, those things are going to be much more effective in terms of making your bones stronger, along with regular sun exposure and uh, weight-bearing exercise. So yes, Maria, D3 and vitamin, vitamin K2 is what we suggest. You, you can go to uh, nativepath.com and check out our vitamin D3 and K2. And we have MCT oil in there, which is another thing that helps it uh, improve absorption relative to a lot of other things you see. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Tina said, I had sciatica trouble in 2014, shots in 2015, lasted until 2017. I had injections in my sacroiliac joints and had no pain in the left at all. Sciatica was all in the right. The left shot hurt so bad and they went in deeper. I think they hit a nerve. <laughs> Will the exercises here today help the pain? I still have sciatica trouble and a little scoliosis, no more shots uh, for, the, for me in the city. Yes, the, I think the exercises today will help you. Um, I would definitely give them a try. And like I mentioned earlier with sciatica, pay attention to the, the strength and how far down that nerve pain goes. So if you're doing an exercise and it makes that nerve pain get stronger or it makes it go further down your leg, that's an indication that the exercise is not good for you. If the exercise helps you decrease the intensity of that nerve pain, or if the nerve pain moves from maybe your foot to now just your knee, that's good. That means that exercise is for you. Another thing I would suggest, Tina, is to go to nativepath.com and the search button at the top, put in back, and you'll see a series of back exercises that I, I show you some more things you can do to help with uh, sciatica. And if none of those work, I suggest going seeing a, a McKinsey therapist, a McKinsey certified physical therapist who can go a little uh, deeper with you and do some mechanical diagnosis. Um, Sherry says, so collagen instead of calcium? Yes. <laughs> yes, that, that's right. That, that's especially the, the collagen is going to really help you in a major way. I, again, I'm not, I'm not a big fan of calcium and it's just a lot of, I'll put it this way. We are, a, we were a country that supplements with more calcium than any other country. And we have the highest rates of osteopenia and osteoporosis. You just think about that. Right, it's it's not about the it's not about the calcium. We got a lot of bad information there. I've heard that swallowing capsules. How big are your pills? Actually, all these pills are really small. The krill is really small, um, and it's easy to swallow. Um, it has a nice, easy gel capsule. Um, the collagen care is also like small. None none of them are like the <laughs> the calcium supplements that I had to get my mom off of. That stuff is hard. The, the, I'm not sure how the, well the body absorbs that. Um, 
Yes. So Betty says, uh, can we watch this program again for re reviews? Yes, Betty, we're going to email you the link to this webinar. And also in the content of that email are going to be all the exercises that I listed out for you in terms of level one, two, three, four, five with each mobility stability couplet. And again, what I suggest is just doing maybe one, two, or even three of those levels every day. If you're someone who's just getting started, you have some pain, start with like level one and two, and then maybe over time, move to like level two and three. And as you get stronger, move to level three and four, maybe three, four, five, and stay there. With each one, two to three sets, 10 to 15 repetitions, and just stay within a comfortable range. But the idea, the most important thing is consistency. We have to keep doing it over and over every day, make it a part of your routine. It's great to do before you go for a morning or evening walk. Um, Linda says, I take collagen PM with fair life reduced fat Milk. Oh, so Linda, what I would suggest instead of the reduced fat milk, low fat milk is using an almond milk or some sort of nut milk, like a cashew milk, right? When we're, when we're, when we're drinking low fat milk and taking out the fat, the fat in the milk is actually one of the more beneficial things, right? It's the proteins and the lactose in milk that are quite problematic. So when we take out the fat, we're left with a lot of, of, potentially harmful milk proteins and uh, a whole lot of sugar, right? A whole lot of sugar, but the fat slows down your bloodstream with absorbing all that sugar. So I would suggest moving towards a, a good quality nut milk, something, something, a nut milk like almond milk or cashew milk, look on the label, make sure it doesn't have a lot of sugar. That's gonna be a better thing to take uh, with a collagen PM. Laura says, does collagen help with arthritis in the hands? Yes, yeah, it, so collagen is great for arthritis everywhere in the body. And what's great about collagen, I've mentioned this before too, like it, it knows where in your body there's damage and it goes to those areas. It doesn't just go to like random places all over the body and it doesn't go there if it doesn't need it, right? So that, that's why like, I'm not, not worried about bone spurs or anything. If you have areas in your hand that need collagen and you consume collagen, the collagen is going to go there. If you have areas in your hip that need collagen, the collagen figures it out. It's like, it has this magical intelligence. And there's a lot of studies that have been done on um, mice in this way, where, where they give the collagen to the mice and they can see under x-rays and are imaging where all the collagen goes. So yeah, it'll help with, with all kinds of areas you may have any arthritis. Uh, next question from Ardith. If you have um, kyphoplasty and a couple of decompressions and a fusion uh, in last April year, so bones are, are too soft. So I had a neurosurgeon redoing the last surgery, still not walking since kyphoplasty. What should I do? I would do all the things that you can, right? And if you're not walking, so we showed you the bridges that you did today. Um, really keeping, if you have soft bones, make sure you're doing all the supplementation and stuff that we're talking about here, uh, because it can be really important to get those muscles, the tendons, the ligaments, everything around there strong and stable. But the bridges you can do, right? The, the laying on the bed, hip flexor stretch, you can do. Just do the things that, that I showed you today that you can do, and you can do it. Yeah, you can do it. Um, but, but keep us updated, Ardith. Um, it's really important. And, uh, you know, watch what you drink, watch what you eat, you know, no, no sodas, um, just drink water, have, have lots of protein, animal-based protein with the amino acids. You know, we gotta, we gotta get your body, the raw materials to, to get the bones stronger. So they're not so soft, but please, uh, yeah, keep us updated. We love hearing your updates, Ardith, when you, when you email us. So Rose says, thank you, Chad and Rachel for the great info. Thank you, Rose, for coming. And Sherry says, since I have been using your collagen, my skin is looking better and hair is so wonderful. Sherry, you're making our day. <laughs> it's wonderful to hear. Thank you for sharing that. Okay, so I think that might be it. Um, and I, I think I got to most of them. Um, but if, if I missed anything, okay, Car Carmilla says, are these exercises okay to do if you have a torn MCL, ACL, meniscus tear and a Baker cyst? Uh, I use all three products. Yes, yes. So these exercises uh, all should be okay. Um, again, the way the way you because because that's kind of a a big spectrum too. Like if uh, if you just tore your MCL yesterday or or ACL or meniscus tear yesterday, then no, th these would not be ideal. We probably need a little more time. But again, the 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 really the telltale sign of whether or not an exercise is good for you is how your body reacts to that exercise. The more reps you do. So Carmilla, if you're if you're doing a bridge. And, and, and you do one and, and like it hurts and you do another one and it hurts a little more and you do a third one and it hurts even more, then that bridge is not for you, 
or whatever stretch or whatever movement it is for you. But if you do that exercise and the first rep, you're like, oh, it kind of yeah, it's a little, it kind of hurts a little bit. And the second one you do it like, that still hurts just a little bit. And the third one, that oh, just hurts a little, good. Let's keep going. That means we, that, 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 that we can live with, right? So really use that as your, as your barometer to say whether or not something's good for you. But in general, I think you, you're going to be just fine with a lot of these and they're going to help you. Um, so Arda says, no soda here. Just can't stand or walk nor lay on the back. Oh, if you can't lay on the back. So you're just sitting with your hip. So Arda, let me show you something here. All right. Here. Right here. So this is where a band can come in handy if you're sitting, right? So you sit right here. And this is going to be like your number one exercise. If you're sitting on here. Just go like this. Boom, 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 boom. This is Arda's exercise like all day. Watching TV, this is doing wonders for you. This is gonna help you in a major way. Um, it's one I didn't show today. <laughs> There's so many exercises we could show you, um, but this right here with the resistance band, great thing to do, right? If we can't stand, we can't walk, can't lay on our back, this we can do, real easy. So I would suggest that. And if you want, there's all kinds of different things you can do, like uh, you know, just seated hip flexion, just right here, just marching in place, just getting this going, right? But really the first one I showed you, it's gonna be your, your best one. Okay, let's see. Sherry, thanks for all your help, encouragement, information. Heck yeah, Sherry, thank you for being on the path. Okay, let's see what else we got. Alana says, fabulous class, you're so welcome. Barbara, bye-bye, thank you. Thank you, Barbara. And we got Alana, okay. Patricia says, All already loving the Native Path product, been using it for over a year. I'm grateful for the exercise program. Look forward to the bands that may come with it. And uh, it, it will come with it. I, I put the May in there, but it's definitely coming. So many thanks. Thank you, Pat. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Ardeth. All right. Wonderful. Okay. I think we did it. I think we got all the questions answered. But if, usually if, I, if we don't get all the questions answered here, uh, Krista will gather them for me and we will get them answered for you. If you ever need anything, just email our customer experience team and see us at nativepath.com. And uh, they'll just tag me and I'll, I'll answer questions for you. But thank you, everyone. Thank you for attending. Thank you for taking an active role in your health and your hips and just being on the path with us. We're so grateful for you. We're really enjoying these webinars. So I hope you're feeling good and healthy and happy and your family's doing well. And uh, I, that's all I got. Rachel, you got anything else? No, I just want to thank you for putting these exercises together because I'm already noticing a difference from just doing that one side with you. So I'm looking forward to jumping to the other side as well as providing a reminder for everybody to stand up too. For those that are able to stand up throughout the day, that's a lot of things that we do. You, you, you reminded us earlier that a lot of these issues come from sitting too much. So gentle reminder to try to set an alarm clock every 45 minutes to every hour and just get up and move, you know, stretching, walking around the room, whatever you need to do to just move the body throughout the day. Super yeah. important. I'm glad you brought that up. Like if nothing else, morning and evening, sun sunrise sunset walks that's like numero uno besides like protein intake in terms of being on the path right so much we can do there unplugged walks be with a family member or walk in silence with your dog so important so i'm glad you mentioned that rachel keep moving all right everybody thank you all for attending uh, wonderful wonderful all right everybody have a great day and we'll see you soon for the next one Woohoo!